Here we see a simple circuit using two switches, A and B, and a lamp as the load. This simple circuit can be used to illustrate the basic operating principles of the AND gate. Switches A and B are normal open switches. You should also note that the truth table has been placed by the AND gate symbol. The truth table is used to indicate the electrical output transition which results from each combination of electrical states at the input. For binary circuits, these states may be classified as being either 0 or 1, high or low, true or false, on or off, or open and closed. For the examples used in this video, we shall use the terms high and low. A high will indicate a high energy state and the low will indicate a low energy state. Now let's examine this circuit and see how it works. As you may have already noticed, when neither switch is pressed, the lamp will not be on. At this point we could say switch A is low, switch B is low, and the output is low. This has been illustrated on our truth table which shows a low on A, a low on B will produce a low at the output. Now let's energize switch A and see what happens. When the button on A is pressed, you will notice that the lamp did not turn on. Again, according to our truth table, we now have a high on A, a low on B, and a low at the output. Next, we will release the button on switch A and push in the button on switch B. Again, you will notice the lamp did not turn on. At this point, the truth table shows a low on A, a high on B, and a low at the output. Now suppose we push in switch A and switch B. When this happens, the lamp turns on. Our truth table now shows that a high on A and a high on B produces a high at the output. As you can see, the truth table is used to summarize the operation of the gate circuit. You also notice that for the AND gate circuit to produce a high, the output had to have a high at both inputs A and B. Now let's look at the OR gate. Here we see the OR gate being represented by a simple circuit consisting of a battery, two switches, and a lamp. But this circuit is different from the one previously shown in that switches A and B are now in parallel. Also shown in this illustration is the symbol for the OR gate as well as the truth table. We will now examine this circuit to see how it works. When neither switch is pressed, the lamp will not turn on. This is indicated on the truth table. The truth table shows a low on A and a low on B produces a low at the output. Now suppose we push the button down on switch A. As you notice, the lamp turned on. Our truth table now shows that a high on A and a low on B will produce a high at the output. Next we will release switch A and push the button on switch B. Once again the lamp is energized. The truth table now shows that a low on A and a high on B will result in a high at the output. As you may have noticed, we can produce a high at the output by pushing in the button on either switch A or switch B. Now suppose we push in switch A and switch B. Once again the lamp will turn on and remain on. This is represented on the truth table as being a high on A, a high on B, which produces a high at the output. The switch used in the inverter circuit is different from those used to illustrate the AND gate and the OR gate. If you recall, the switches used for the AND gate and the OR gate were normal open switches. The switch used for this simple circuit is a normal closed switch. In this circuit, the lamp is normally energized. Only when the switch is open does the lamp turn off. Since the inverter has only one input and one output, it will have only two states of operation. As you can see from the truth table, when the input is high, the output will be low, and when the input is low, the output will be high. Basically, the inverter reverses or inverts the incoming signal. You will also hear this gate being referred to as a NOT gate. Now let's see what would happen if we combine two of these gates. Here we see the AND gate and the inverter or NOT gate. Also shown are the truth tables for the two gates. As you may recall, the AND gate had to have both an A and B high to produce a high output, while the inverter simply inverted the signal. Let's suppose we place a positive going signal into input A of the AND gate. Input B will remain low or at ground potential. We can see from the truth table for the AND gate that if there is a high on A and a low on B, then the output will be low. 
Since the low is being fed into the input of the inverter gate, we can see from the inverter gate's truth table that the low will be inverted to a high. Therefore, by making input A high and input B low on the AND gate, we can expect a high at the output of the inverter gate. Now let's make input A low and input B high. Once again, we can expect a high at the output of the inverter gate. Since A is low and B is high, the AND gate will produce a low into the inverter, which is then inverted into a high signal. Only by making both inputs A and B high can we force a low at the output of the inverter gate. Once again, by referring to the truth table, we see that when input A is high and input B is high, we get a high at the output of the AND gate. This high signal is fed into the inverter gate and is changed or inverted into a low. It is common to find both of these gates combined to form a circuit called a NAND gate. If you will notice, the symbol for a NAND gate looks very similar to the AND gate symbol, the only difference being the small circle placed at the output of the device. Since the NAND gate has an inverter gate built into its output, it will invert the signals coming from the AND gate portion of the device. Therefore, when both inputs are low, there will be a high output. When input A is high and input B is low, there will still be a high output. Also, when input A is low and input B is high, the output will remain high. Only by making both inputs A and B high can we make the output of the NAND gate low. Here we see the OR gate with an inverter gate. Also shown are both truth tables. If you will recall, when either input A or input B was high, it produced a high at the output of the OR gate. When the high from the OR gate is fed into the inverter circuit, it is changed into a low. The only possible combination for producing a high from this circuit is when there are lows at both inputs A and B. When inputs A and B are low, then the output of the inverter circuit will be a high. Once again, it is common to find both the OR gate and the inverter gate being used to form a common digital gate called the NOR gate. Notice the circle at the output of the gate symbol. Anytime you see this small circle being used on a gate, it indicates the signal is being inverted at that point. Most of the gates shown to this point have had only two inputs and one output. In today's modern circuit, it is common to find gates with three or even four inputs each. Even though these gates have more inputs, their basic operation is the same as their two input counterparts, which we have just discussed. Let's examine the four input and the gate first and look at these similarities. The four input and the gate is being illustrated with a simple series circuit consisting of four normal open switches and a lamp for the load. A truth table has also been shown beside the circuit indicating the output state when all inputs are low. As you will notice, when switch A is energized, the lamp does not turn on. Therefore, we have a low at the output. This will be illustrated on the truth table as being a high on A, and a low at switches B, C, and D, which produces a low at the output. Next, we release switch A and energize switch B. Again, the lamp did not turn on. This is shown on the truth table as a low on A, a high on B, and lows on C and D, which produces a low. After releasing switch B, we energize switch C and the lamp still remains turned off. By looking at the truth table, we can see a low on switches A, B, and D and a high on switch C. The output still remains low. Next, by energizing only switch D, the lamp remains in an off mode. Once again, the truth table show that a low on switches A, B, and C and a high on switch D will produce a low at the output. As you can readily see, by energizing only one switch at a time, the output of the circuit will remain in the low state. Therefore, to get the lamp to turn on, we must energize more than one switch at a time. However, in this circuit, even by energizing two or three of these switches at a time, the output remains low and the lamp does not turn on. Please examine some of the combinations on the truth table. Only when all of the switches are energized does the lamp turn on. This is indicated on the truth table as being a high on switches A, B, C, and D, which results in a high at the output. 
Now let's examine a three input OR gate. To do this we will use a simple parallel switch circuit consisting of three switches with a lamp as the load at the output. Notice the switches are wired in a normal open configuration. By examining the truth table you can see that the lamp will be lit for every combination except one. Only when none of the switches are energized will the lamp turn off. This is because if switch A or switch B or switch C or any combination of switches is energized, the current path will be completed and the lamp will turn on. As you have seen from these past two illustrations, the two input devices and the multi-input devices both operate on the same principle in that the AND gates must have all the inputs high to produce a high output and the OR gates have to have anywhere from one to all of the inputs high to produce a high output.